We've all been there before. After a busy day of dungeon diving and adventuring, you've worked up a powerful hunger. No worries, though, because those artificers that brought you the handy haversack and the portable hole have you covered with their newest innovation, my nutsack. My nutsack. And don't let its size fool you, it's bigger on the inside. For this handy little sack connects right to a dummy plane full of nuts. With my nutsack hanging around, you and your party will never go hungry again. So be sure to stop by your local supply depot and grab my nutsack today. What up fam? Welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Now the astute of you may notice, my background here is very different and I have a mic in my face. This is because I'm getting the workshop studio completely redone. Like right now it's all gutted and everything. So I had to make a new temporary studio here in my office, just kind of get things moving so you didn't have to wait like the two or three weeks it's gonna take to get this thing done. So forgive me if lighting is weird and sound is weird because everything's weird right now. So trucking right along on today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make my nutsack. My nutsack. As stated in the infomercial, this little piece of magical technology will make sure that you and your adventuring party never runs out of nuts thus remaining fueled up no matter what dungeon you find yourself in. So let's just jump right in and level up this skill. Making templates. Now, normally in all these episodes, I spend a lot of time planning out how I'm gonna go about any of these projects. But I'm not gonna lie, my contractor called me like a month earlier saying they only had the time if they started now, which caught me super on the back foot. All that to say, I was really winging it on this project. I'm happy with the way it turned out, but I was really winging it. So I started making my template for this out of this scrap piece of felt that I had lying around. Mostly because it wasn't packed and it would be easier to fold over on itself so I can get a symmetrical design out of the thing. So after straightening out one end, I measured and cut a line about six inches wide. Then for symmetry, I folded it in half and cut seven inches tall, rounding off the open bottom corner, giving it this pouch shaped panel. That bit is what's gonna end up being the front and the back of the pouch here. Okay, so the felt was really good for just kind of figuring this part out, but it makes really bad template material. It's just too soft, so when you're trying to trace it, it moves all around on you, and it just doesn't really work out for me. So instead, I busted out some empty cereal boxes. It turns out these are great for making templates, and for some reason, I always have lots of them lying around. I'm gonna be real, breakfast, lunch, or dinner? I love cereal. So good. With my boxes all kind of prepped and opened up, I just traced the felt on top of it and cut them out with a pair of scissors. And again, that's gonna end up being both the front and the back. They end up looking exactly the same, so I don't really need to make two of those. Okay, so next I needed to figure out this gusset material that connects the front to the back. To do this, I just lined it up along the measurements of my mat here and rolled it along its edge, seeing how many inches it travels. I even extended it a little bit with my ruler just to make sure I got the whole length in. Now, once I had that exact measurement, I added four inches, two inches to either side. And this is just gonna help us out with the cinch area later on. Uh, don't worry about it for now. So I put that length onto the cardboard, giving my gusset a three inch width. Then again, cut the whole thing out. Okay, with that, the template for like the primary body here is all done and we can move on to making the nutsack. Now, my nutsack is made out of this fine suede from Tandy Leather. This stuff is so beautiful and gives my sack a really luxurious feeling. Using the pouch templates I made, I traced them onto the suede with a marker, first once and then flipping it over to make sure I make two of these shapes, one for the front and one for the back. Then I just cut them out with my rotary blade. Quick note, by the way, the rotary blade is the best way to be cutting out suede. As you try to cut with like a razor knife or whatever, it just kind of bunches and moves on you. It, it doesn't work well for me. The rotary blade totally came through with this. At this point, I also traced and cut out that gusset area as well. And with that, these beautiful pieces are all cut out and we are ready to start constructing Le Sac. Now to make sure it has a really strong hold on these seams, I ended up using a saddle stitch. But I was kind of worried when I was laying it out about being able to kind of punch all my holes and have everything stay where it's supposed to be because this is quite stretchy. So to solve that issue, I ended up using some of this Tanner's Bond tape. This stuff is just a double-sided tape and it comes in a couple different varieties, either like semi-permanent or permanent. And it's basically just kind of used to hold your pieces together before you like stitch or anything. So I just applied this to the edges of my panel where the seam's gonna go. 
Once that was all in place, I removed the backing and then carefully lined up one edge of the gusset all along that taped edge. As you can see, this started to form the cavity of the sack and gives us the edge that we're gonna sew together. I then went ahead and repeated these same steps on the other panel. The finished result was this nearly perfect sack. Again, I was kind of making it up as I went along here. So when I, when I kind of like opened it up and had a look at that, I was really impressed at how nicely that came out already. Okay, so with those edges all lined up exactly where we need them to go, I used this little pencil trick of running one finger along the edge while the pencil was drawing in order to make a consistently distant line for my thread to go along. This is just a really easy way to get a consistent line that I learned from like my construction days. We're gonna use that line as a guide to where to sink our holes for our stitching. To make those holes, I just used this diamond punch and went all along that line. Now, as I said, the stitch used here is gonna be the saddle stitch, which I covered in a lot of detail right here in this video. That has way more detail, but I'll go through a quick rundown on how I did it with this one. So to start with, you want about three times more thread as the length of the run you're trying to sew. You're also gonna need two needles, one on either side. Now in that tutorial on how to do the saddle stitch, I show you how to lock the needles into place, but because we have so much excess thread, we actually want to instead pull the excess through the eyes so that the thread seems shorter. This way you're not passing it through the hole and trying to get all that thread through. It's just gonna be quicker for you. So to begin with, we're gonna pass the needle through the first hole and then make sure there's an even amount on either side. Now on every subsequent hole, you pass both needles through at the same time, forming this X. Then loop the thread over the needle points before pulling the rest of the way through and pulling everything snug. Now this might seem a little clunky, but after a while you get pretty fast with loading the thread around your fingers to make those loops. Oh, and quick thing I learned with suede or any other kind of soft material, if you pull from side to side like that, you're gonna to start to cause it to ripple a little bit as that thread gets tighter. To make sure that doesn't happen, instead pull along the line of your seam. That'll get it nice and tight without causing your material to ripple at all. And once you reach the end, form a lock stitch by going back a few stitches, then cut your thread short and burn the ends. Cool, now our sack is reinforced and ready for work. But I did worry about the fact that a lot of nuts are oily and I didn't want to stain our sack. Nobody wants a stained sack. But most of the kind of more natural sealants I had, I was worried would bleed through the material and discolor the outside. And I didn't really trust that any of the spray on ones would be like food safe or anything. So I came up with this little workaround that seemed to actually work pretty well. All I did was heated a block of beeswax until it was just soft and rubbed it into the nap of the suede. I had tested this with some water, which just kind of beaded off of it, and it didn't discolor the other side or anything. That was a shot in the dark, and I was just, I'm kind of proud of how that worked out. It seemed to work really well, actually. Now, with that inside protected, we can go ahead and flip it inside out to reveal the beauty of my nutsack. I was thrilled at how clean those lines looked, the shape of it, like, it looked professional. I was really happy with how that came out. All right, so with the body of the sack all set up, we're gonna go ahead and figure out how to make it cinch. So to make this bad boy cinch shut, we could have just went ahead and put little grommet holes evenly spaced all around it, and it would just kind of make your stereotypical sack, you know? Kind of like a dumpling shape with the top kind of closing in evenly as one spot. But I didn't want that because I really wanted to maintain this nice teardrop shape with a flat front and back. That's where those extra couple inches on the sides of my gusset come in handy. First things first though, we need to remove the excess where the fold of the seam actually starts. Just because if we left it where it was and folded it in on itself, uh, it would get really bunched up in those corners there. So all I did is cut a little slit in line of the rim of the sack and then remove the sides of that excess material down to those slits. Next, I added some more Tanner's Bond to the edge and folded it over the inside of the bag. This forms a small tunnel for our cord to feed through. For the rest of the cinch, I just wanted to use these nice eyelets. So I measured some even spacing about a half of an inch from the top of the sack and made some marks. Then I just punched said marks out with a rotary punch. Quick note and a little learning time for me on suede, you can't use like a regular punch on it. The first thing I tried to use was a regular hole punch like you just hit with a mallet and the suede, nothing happened to it. Not even a mark was made in it. I think it just absorbs the blow so well that it's, it's completely unscathed. A rotary punch though, that did the trick. 
But with those hole punch, I just inserted those eyelets and set them into place with the recommended anvil and striker. I then fed some cord through the eyelets and along those little tunnels that we formed on either side. So the way this works is those areas end up stiffer so that when they close, they stay pretty flat and my nutsack maintains its signature shape. Oh. All right, so at this point, it is a sack. Like you can just do whatever you want from there on out. If you like it how it is, have it like a dice bag or whatever. But to go ahead and make it my nutsack, we're gonna move on to finishing touches. Now I would love to say that the flap and the, the belt loop and the little keeper bit here has like specific measurements that, that mean a thing for reasons. Nah, I just cut multiple versions of a thing that I thought looked cool and checked on how it would fit. For my sack is more art than science. Anyways, after making my Lucky Charms template, I transferred this onto six ounce veg tan leather and cut it out. I did pretty much the same thing with this keeper bit here and cut a one inch strap just long enough to form a belt loop and nestle it right along the inside of this top flaps tail here. And then to these, I did the standard leather thing. Beveled the edge, slicked them smooth, all that kind of stuff. I also went ahead and cut in the thread grooves as well with a groover tool. Originally, I did these just for design because I really, I really didn't want to have to sew anymore. But as you're gonna find out, I'm glad I put them in. So once all that leather was looking good, I decided to dye them a light brown. Now I also wanted to have this kind of faded aged look here that I got going on. Um, and to, to make that happen, I used the same type of technique that I cover in this episode right here. It basically just consists of taking a darker version of the same color you're using and lightly dabbing it around the edges, fading into the center. This is super simple, but has a really nice effect. All right, so with that looking slick, next we got to attach this belt loop to the cover. To do this, I just lined it up where I wanted it and punched a hole straight through both pieces for a rivet. Then I folded the belt loop over as far as I thought I needed it and did the same thing. So with these two holes for rivets in place here, the bottom and the top one, I was then able to kind of measure out exactly where the center one should go. And I punched that in as well. And at this point is where my kind of muddling around and making it up as I went is most apparent. As I mentioned before, I didn't want to sew. I don't, I don't particularly like the hand stitching, to be honest with you. So my hope was, since I have to put in these rivets anyways, I would just rivet through everything and that would hold it in place. So that's what I did. I lined up my holes and marked where they went, then said holes were punched and rivets were set. This, this did not work. Not at all. The suede's just too loose and my sack hangs awkwardly. So biting the bullet, I placed a striking mat on the corner of my table so I can fit the sack over it and went to town punching my holes for the threads to go through. Then I just saddle stitched the whole thing into place. I don't like sewing, but I am so glad I did. This worked perfectly. It makes it sit exactly how I need it to. It also adds a little bit of extra support to the back of it, keeping it flush against your hip when you wear it. So, you know, don't, don't cut corners. It just ends up giving you more work in the end. I, prob I probably taught myself that lesson like 14, 15 times in my life. It doesn't stick, it does not stick. But having temporarily learned this lesson, I pre-punched the holes in the little keeper here. Then using the Tanner's Bond, I stuck it into place onto the front of the sack. Now leather sewing needles are kind of blunt. It's not like when you're sewing with thread where it can actually get through all the little holes that the fabric forms. Uh, that doesn't exist with leather. So you have to punch the holes all the way through. So in order to match those holes up through my suede, I end up using this stitching all here. It just has a sharper point and does an easy job of making these holes go through the suede. Then again, I saddle stitched it into place. This is gonna give me a super secure keeper for my top flap. So to make that little keeper work, I end up having to punch in four holes, two over two, through everything, just like this. Then I fed some cordage through so that the top formed a loop and the bottom was left dangling. Finally, I punched a hole in the top flap and added this decorative cabochon. And then just trimmed up all my cordage to size and tied knots in the ends to stop them from pulling all the way through. Now to close the flap, I just loop the cordage over that cabochon and pull to lock it into place. 
And there you have it. My nutsack is ready for our next adventure. This was a super fun build and I, I love how this thing came out. And hopefully you follow along in this project and make my nutsack your nutsack. But all right, that's all I have. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, why don't you hit me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. And of course, super special thanks to my Patreon members. Uh, you guys' support continually blows me away. Your contributions go a long way to me kind of trying to expand this channel, um, even with like what we're doing with the workshop and the new office that's coming up and stuff. Uh, we're, we're taking this real seriously and I, I, I really appreciate what you've done to kind of make this, this dream of this business a reality. So I really do appreciate it. If you like what I do here and want to see the channel grow, maybe considering joining the Patreon down in the description below. Finally, if there's any skill you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it down in the comments section and I'll add it to the list. Oh, and as a last special treat and for you staying till the very end of this episode, I'm gonna be offering you the template to my nutsack for free. Link also in the description below. All right, I should get going. I wanna pitch this thing to Wizards of the Coast, see if they wanna make my nutsack official. In the meantime though, keep leveling up, you. Wait, you forgot to save the holes. What? Oh, is that today? So be sure to stop by your local supply depot and grab my nutsack today.